All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your PlayStation 4 controller up to your Windows PC and get it working to play PC games using the software called DS4 Windows. So to get started, we're going to need a couple different pieces of software. We're going to need DS4 Windows, we're going to need Vision Bus, and we're going to need Windows.NET Framework in order to get this working. All of those are free. You don't really have to pay for anything involved in this except for whatever controller you're trying to use. So we're gonna start this off by downloading DS4 Windows. If you Google DS4 Windows, you'll see a couple of different search results. You want this one down here from GitHub called releases Ryochan 7 slash DS4 Windows. This is the current developer of DS4 Windows. I don't know who this person is from this top result, and I don't know who built this one down here for the third result. You want the one from GitHub. So if we open that, this will take you to the most recent release of DS4 Windows, and probably the last for a little while, unless another developer picks this up, which was last updated back in December 31st of 2023. And this one, you'll want to download the 64-bit edition, I'm just going to grab the zip file edition. You can grab the zip file or from 7-zip. They're the same thing. It's just that 7-zip compresses it a little bit more. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the 64-bit edition and put that into a folder that I've already created. And the other thing that we're going to need to download to just start running DS4 Windows to begin with is the .NET framework. You'll want .NET 8 desktop or newer. In this case, we're just going to grab this one right here that's listed on the actual download page for the driver because it's already right here and we might as well. So I'm just going to click that link right there. It'll take me to the .NET Framework site, which is from Microsoft themselves. If you're curious about the legitimacy of this software, .NET is literally from Microsoft. It's a framework to build apps just like this, and it's for free. And so with that stuff all downloaded, the last thing that we're going to need is the Vision Bus component to all of this. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to look up Vision Bus. And then we're going to want the top result here from releases nefarious Vision Bus. And this is another driver that has recently been updated to its final version. So you should see the version that's labeled as November 2nd, 2023. We're going to download the only real version to download the X64, X86, ARM64, whatever, EXE. The only version available, just download that. I already have it downloaded from a previous tutorial. Then once you have that stuff all downloaded, we're going to go and install a couple of different things. So here in my downloads folder that I've got all this stuff in, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the latest .NET framework. So we're just going to double click on this and it'll ask for administrator verification that you actually want to download that. Just go ahead and click yes. And then the process of installing .NET should be pretty quick. It's not exactly a really big package, even if you're using like an old regular hard drive and not an SSD that literally just took two seconds. And then after that, you're going to want to install the Vision Bus driver. If you were to run DS4 Windows right now, it would ask you to install Vision Bus, but we're just going to simplify that by downloading it and installing it immediately. So I'm just going to run that installation. And just follow this installation guide, agree to the terms of service, all of that jazz. And then this driver as well should only take a moment to update. And then boom, that's done. So the last thing that we need to do before we plug in our controller is we need to extract from this zip file the DS4 Windows program. So I'm going to extract that to a folder of the same name. That way the, con the contents of it don't get garbled all over my computer. And I'm going to open this up. And then inside of here is a whole bunch of stuff. I know it kind of looks a little bit confusing, but what you're looking for is there is an almost like rainbow colored icon that's called DS4 Windows. It says it's an application. We're going to double click on that. Now, before we go any further, just because it helps to support the channel, 
I am an affiliate for NordVPN. If you're looking for a VPN that'll help keep your computer and your internet connection private and secure, I totally recommend NordVPN. It helps prevent people from snooping on your internet traffic, especially if you go out and you use your laptop on public Wi-Fi sources. It's got a built-in ad blocker. You can easily connect from anywhere to a, there are dozens and hundreds of servers from around the globe. And it's also got built-in protections, sort of like an ad blocker or a, a virus protection software to help keep nasty stuff off of your computer. So if you're looking for one, I have a discount code built into a URL in the video description below. It helps to support the channel, and I would appreciate it if you did click on it, if you're in the market for a VPN. And if it's detecting that we have the .NET framework installed properly, it should prompt you where you want to save your preferences and all of your saved data. I like to keep it with the program folder. That way, if I have to delete this and reinstall it because it's having problems, it's a lot easier to do. You can also install it on your app data folder where a lot of the other programs on your computer like to save their save data. Same thing with games and stuff, but I'm just gonna put everything inside of the programs folder for convenience. Now there's another little pop-up here that's going to open up and ask me if I want to enable support for any other controllers or third-party stuff. And the, the simple answer is to prevent conflicts and things preventing it from detecting the right controllers, they don't enable these by default anymore. So if you want to hook up the PS5 controller instead of the PS4, you'd unclick DS4 and, and click on DualSense. Or if you wanted to, you could also work with the Switch Pro controller or the Joy-Cons. But for the sake of things not conflicting and breaking, only select the ones that you're actually going to use. Don't select all of them. In this case, for this tutorial, I'm only showing you how to set up the, the PS4 version, the DS4 device, the DualShock 4 as they call it. So I'm only going to select the top one and then I'm gonna click close. Then what should happen is the DS4 Windows actual software page should open, which looks exactly like this. So if the computer is properly detecting your controller, it should pop up on the little list of devices right here that you see right now. You have two options to connect your controller. You can either plug it in like I did, or you can also connect your controller via Bluetooth, which is a different tutorial that I'll do on the side just for the sake of keeping this short. And it should pop up once it's connected to your computer like this. If it's not, you might need to use the little hole on the back of your controller underneath of the light bar on the right side and press a paper clip in there for a count of like 12. That's the button that factory resets your controller and like resets all of its connections so it's not trying to connect to some PlayStation out there that you may or may not still have. Then once it's defaulted, you should be easier to plug in and get working on your computer. You might have to do that a couple of times and you might even have to get your computer restarted before everything behaves itself and it shows up in this list. Some people have also noted that it will show up when they connect it via Bluetooth, but it won't show up when they connect it via a cable. That could mean that your cable doesn't have data. It's a charging only cable that you got with like a phone or something. There's a whole list of reasons that might be preventing your controller from connecting. So just play around with it to see what the issue might be. But if it is getting detected and you start hearing the avalanche of beeps like I just did on my computer telling me a new stuff is plugged in, it'll show up here. You should be good to go and be ready to go out and play games and DS4 Windows will tell your computer that your controller is an Xbox controller. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, but Larry, I don't want my computer to show me Xbox buttons if I've got PlayStation buttons. The, the unfortunate answer is, if it was possible to show you PlayStation buttons, that would mean that the game you're playing already had support for a PlayStation controller, and you wouldn't need this software. So you're kind of stuck seeing Xbox controller buttons. The alternative 
is if you go into the profile that you're using, the default, you can go inside of here, and there is an option somewhere in here on the Others tab to emulate a DualShock 4 controller, and then you can click on Save. And if it's possible for the game you're playing to show PlayStation buttons, that will do the trick, and that should display PlayStation buttons. However, this doesn't work for the vast majority of games that you'll be playing on your computer on places like Steam and Epic. So if you make this change and it breaks, all you have to do is go back to Edit, click on Other, and emulate an Xbox 360 controller instead, and then click on Save. That's how you reverse that change. Otherwise, there's a few other things that DS4 Windows allows you to do. You can click on edit and you can click on any one of these buttons that you see on the little controller map. And then you can say like, well, when I press the triangle button, if I click on it, it'll bring up a little menu and I can have it click on the U button whenever I click on the triangle button. You can dynamically remap this however you want to either an Xbox controller, a keyboard, or a mouse. Those are your options. Um, if you want to like click on one of these and say like, I don't want my touchpad to be bound to anything, you can click on unbound to unbind it so it doesn't react anymore because some folks have been reporting that when they use their touchpad, it goes crazy and tries to control their mouse and things break. So you can easily unbind things. You can easily click on something to rebind it to whatever you want. You have all sorts of options to play around with. So that's pretty much it. You have to leave this program open when you play for it to act as a driver, but when you minimize it, it'll minimize to the system tray if you want. Um, if for whatever reason you decide that you need to enable other support for other types of controllers, all you have to do is at the top here, there is a settings tab. You can go over here to device options, and here you have the little toggles to enable PlayStation 5 controller support, Switch controller support, PlayStation 3 controller support, all of that is in here. PlayStation 3 controller support involves some other steps. I'm gonna have to go look up what those are in order to get that to work, if it even works properly at all. So if it does, you'll see a video on how to do that on the channel later. So anyway, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been how to plug your PlayStation 4 controller in to your Windows computer. I hope you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.